Nobody knows hard times like mesothelioma patients and families. Mesothelioma patients suffer the uncertainty of how do I select treatment. So I've been treating mesothelioma now for 30 years or so. I've seen the, the most extreme uh, cases to the least aggressive that you can imagine. Every patient is unique. As we mine in and we look at the molecular behavior of these tumors, we're going to understand that there are strategies that we can use that we've never even thought of before that are going to really be extremely effective in this patient population. We're combining the immunosuppressive factors such as TGF-beta inhibitor with standard chemotherapy, hoping now that by adding multiple arms of attack um, from chemotherapy and the immune system, we can benefit our outcomes. The people that you met in this room and that presented really think deeply about the disease and they're very motivated to get more effective treatment and really to enhance the quality of your life. I'm June Bright. I was diagnosed with pleural mesothelioma in early of 2002. Hi, I'm Rob Cagle. I'm from uh, Pekin, Illinois. Uh, I was diagnosed in October of 05. Uh, I'm Mike Conlon. I'm from Kennett Square, Pennsylvania. Um, I was diagnosed six months ago. My name is Joseph Bauman. I'm a retired firefighter from Las Vegas, Nevada. I thought I was dead. I am very much alive. My name is Marlon Landon. I was diagnosed with meso, uh, pleural meso, in April of 2000. <laughs> I have hope when I see the love that all of you share for each other and the support and the commitment to each other's goodwill. I don't think any community knows more about holding on to hope than mesothelioma patients and their families. In 2000, the Mesothelioma Applied Research Foundation began funding research. These were the first ever peer-reviewed research awards awarded ever in mesothelioma. Why do we do this? Well, obviously, we do it for today's mesothelioma patients and families. We do it because it's the only hope for the millions of people, besides those already diagnosed, who are at risk from the past decades of asbestos use. You know, every once in a while we hear about another cancer that has been cured, and I want mesothelioma to be in that list. The stories, the personal stories and the personal histories of each of you are probably the most powerful thing we have to raise awareness and create compassion. I'm in Washington, D.C. today with the Mesothelioma Applied Research Foundation. And we are on the Hill, visiting with our representatives and our senators, trying to get a ban on asbestos passed and to get funding for mesothelioma research. Uh, we get the funding, get these drug companies to do the research on it, and they're going to find something down there that's going to help me. And that's, i got to believe in that. The memory of the folks on the wall will always inspire us in our work. So, whether I'm on the wall or not, I want everybody to fight and keep fighting so that someday there is no wall. I've got friends that I've met through the foundation that are five years cancer free, seven years cancer free of a cancer they say can't be cured. Don't tell me it can't be cured because I see it. I see the results. From the wonderful doctors and, and everybody that was doing their research, I'm here because of them. They saved my life. I've been cancer-free for five years. I feel great.